Out of nowhere, Calvin Ridley is a Tennessee Titan. According to Ian Rappaport, the details, four years, $92 million with $50 million fully guaranteed. This is for a 29-year-old currently, obviously coming up on his age 30 season, a guy who missed the vast majority of the 2021 year, then had to sit out 2022. To me, Hayden had a really good, solid season in 2023 and now becomes a heavily, heavily paid wide receiver for the first time in his NFL career. We should look at this as a two-year, uh, $25 million per year deal uh, guaranteed, and then it'll be a team option for the Titans afterwards. In the meantime, they're trying to figure out if Will Levis is their guy. Having DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley on the perimeter gives them two solid, established, reliable veterans. Uh, I think both DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley don't have the same juice, but I think what I like about this fit here for Calvin Ridley is he's probably going to have to win less in isolation on the line of scrimmage. Uh, and I think that he's going to be able to be able to be able to be moved around a little bit more uh, in Brian Callahan's offense, which we right. saw with Jamar Chase, for example, rather than last year when Jacksonville was running out of options because of the other injuries. So I think that Calvin Ridley could look a little bit better right. uh, this year, assuming Will Levis is capable as a passer. So I think there's a number of layers we have to unpack here, okay? The first one is his fit here with the Tennessee Titans. And let's begin by saying, as you said, Brian Callahan is the new head coach of this team. He just spent a ton of time with the Cincinnati Bengals. If you listen to any of the interviews that he or Rand Carthon did at the NFL Combine, all they talked about was adding playmakers, okay? We saw Tony Pollard deal immediately come down the pipe. Um, they obviously have Tajay Spears already on the roster. And then... For the team that today, and really the third day of free agency, has the most effective cap space remaining on their books, goes out there and spends this money on Calvin Ridley. The other segment of this is, I, I believe fans out there, either that play fantasy football or watch games, might have a differing opinion of Calvin Ridley than me and you. They'll look at you know 76 receptions, 1,016 yards, eight touchdowns and be like, that's not worth this much $23 million per year, $50 million guaranteed. But what Hayden and I constantly tried to reiterate in stats versus film and every single show that we did throughout the season is basically since Zay Jones went down for the Jacksonville Jaguars this past season, Calvin Ridley was being played out of position. He was being used as their X wide receiver and having to win down the field without motion, without alignments over and over and over again until that kind of changed just towards the end of the year. So with Brian Callahan, who was a main architect of that Bengals offense, you kind of, if you want to be simple with this, can have DeAndre Hopkins in somewhat of the T. Higgins role, Calvin Ridley in somewhat of the Jamar Chase role, and then we roll from there. Is is it as simple as that to you? I think, yeah, I basically do think it's as simple as that. Last year when Calvin Ridley was barely missing out on some production. I think it was because there were reps where he would get pushed near the sideline because he's a little bit more of a slender guy. And it, previously he had a little bit more speed to get around that corner and downfield. This time he's not going to have to be pushed next to the sideline over and over and over again. The weird part about the fit though is it kind of goes down to like the Traylon Burks uh, evaluation here too is Traylon, DeAndre, Calvin Ridley only play on the perimeter. So Traylon played 77% of his snaps in college in the slot. Do they push push him back inside? Has Traylon Burks even been productive enough to be part of this conversation? Um, also, maybe not as well, but the Titans are going to play a lot more three wide receiver sets this upcoming year. And I think they're trying to get, they're trying to avoid the Bryce Young debacle from last year where you got to at least be able to evaluate your young quarterback. And I think that DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley is a good enough one-two punch to at least get that answered. Traylon Burks is a fascinating point of conversation here because Rand Carthon, who again pulls a lot of weight in this organization, was not the general manager when they made that deal and obviously dealt away A.J. Brown, who, by the way, is being paid just $2 million more annually in his contract with the Philadelphia Eagles. I also want to add another layer onto this is that Calvin Ridley's passing game coordinator last year with the Jacksonville Jaguars, I believe his name is Nick Holtz, is now the offensive coordinator yeah. with the wow. Tennessee Titans. Um, what you and I are saying about the role that Calvin Ridley played last year, misused, I would phrase it, the Jacksonville Jaguars understood that this offseason. And I think that they had this 
plan laid out, and some might call it a gamble of, hey, in the early part of free agency, we're going to pay Gabriel Davis $13 million per year to be that boundary X ISO wide receiver who just wins on the field as a bigger mm -hmm. body. And then once you get to four o'clock on Wednesday, when we can re-sign Calvin Ridley without getting the penalty of moving our third round pick that we traded to Atlanta, that would then turn to a second round pick if they re-signed him in the first two days, then we just re-signed Calvin Ridley. And it sounded like Hayden, that that plan was going according to exactly what they had hoped. It was them and the New England Patriots. And I, I do wonder if, you know, having to navigate those waters and balance the books in that way, the Tennessee Titans understood that in some way mm -hmm. and said, oh, we're getting to this point where even if we give him this offer, he can't go back to Jacksonville and ask for, you know, despite the taxes and, you know, all that stuff. We can't go back to Jacksonville and he they can't match this. So if we mm -hmm. offer this, he's going to take this money. And that's exactly to me mm -hmm. from a third party how it played out. Jacksonville just didn't have that much cap space, period. They had like $10 million going into today. So with compared to the Titans, who I believe had like 70 uh, million, all of a sudden it's going to be hard to win a bidding war when you just have less money to spend. I, there was also a report when it was Jacksonville and New England that Calvin Ridley wanted to be close to home and then also not be in a taxable state. Well, Tennessee solved some of those issues. Also, the familiar familiarity with the OC as well. So uh, coming in there and winning the bid at the last second uh, was smart. Um, and it wasn't predictable early on. But throughout today, once we started putting the pieces together, you can kind of see how the Titans had to spend this money somehow. And I think uh, it's going to actually help us out in the mock draft world now that they have two of the three wide receiver spots for sure locked up. Maybe now at seven, are they a trade down team? Do they draft the left tackle of the future? Uh, with Joe Alt, for example, um, because at one point we were saying, is this a Malik Neighbors spot? Right. I think that's this takes a little bit pressure off of that. If they like Malik Neighbors over Joe Alt, sure, throw him into the slot. Let's boogie on. But uh, they could also look at the left tackle in the first round now. So they are at pick number seven. I had previously given them a Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze because of you know, the situation that Brian Callahan was a part of with Cincinnati of, hey, do we take Jamar Chase or do we take Panay Sewell in that draft? And obviously they sided mm -hmm. with Jamar Chase. And in many ways, the Titans are, were in the exact same situation. I don't know, though, like if they grade those wide receivers more higher than mm -hmm. the offensive tackles, if you allow a 32-year-old DeAndre Hopkins Right. Um, stopping you from taking one of those elite wide receiver prospects, you know, and Malik neighbors can play in the slot, a vertical slot option. Totally. They need, I, I I'm with you though, on the trailing Burke stuff. I think right now, if the season started today, they would slide him into the slot and see what happens. Right. I don't think that anyone in this organization is expecting a whole lot for trailing Burks at this point. And I don't think that they should. We had these same concerns about Traylon Burks entering the NFL because it was a bunch of shorter crossing routes that he could win after the catch on. And every once in a while, he would be on the outside and running vertical routes and catching those on occasion. Right. So his entire rookie season was basically learning how to play wide receiver on the fly. And he's also been injured ever since. You know, it's been awful head injuries that felt like one after the other. Right. And so, yeah, you're here in year three and it's almost, uh, Hey, if you give us something, then we can, you know, bet on you moving forward. But if not, then, hey, now we can move forward in, in this other direction. You know, they have brought in Lloyd Cushenberry at center on top of this, not filling in that left tackle spot. It feels like that is the glaring hole. Mm -hmm. They still do have plenty of cap space, you know, mm -hmm. like they, they maybe even could go pay like a Tyron Smith, for example, yep. and really confuse this in mm -hmm. the top seven overall selections. But I don't know if I am sitting here on, you know, March 12th, March 13th, and saying that, hey, because they signed Calvin Ridley, that means they takes them out of wide receiver at number seven. It doesn't take them out, but if I was doing a mock draft right now, I'd slide into left right. tackle. It's just a bigger need. Um, big winner for fantasy circles, Christian Kirk. I mean, Gabe Davis out there on the perimeter. He's doing the dirty work stuff. I don't think he's going to be a huge volume hog. The Evan Ingram and, and Christian Kirk numbers – with Trevor Lawrence, who we're very high on, I think those guys are going to go absolutely nuts. At this point, it seems like they're going to keep 
Zay Jones, I think that if they were going to sign Calvin Ridley, then they would release Zay Jones. Maybe now Zay Jones stays on on the on the deal. But I think that I mean Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram. I think it's a huge win that you're placing yeah. Calvin Ridley with Gabe Davis because it's not just the difference in the volume; it's also the type of roles. And I think they're going to have to scheme up a lot more stuff to Christian Kirk. Yeah, I wonder if they pivot that Calvin Ridley money. Which again, this was part of the plan. They definitely did want him back. If they shift that over to a different position, like defensive line, for example, like Eric Arms said, they're sitting there at pick number 17. Mm -hmm. Wide receiver is definitely more in play now. And this certainly will not soften or quell any comments Duval has, Jaguars Twitter has for Trent Balky at this moment. Because sure. again, the 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 plans were in place. Right. And if the Titans didn't come calling with this, it certainly sounded as if Calvin Ridley was going back to Jacksonville. Uh, we talked to Trevor Lawrence out there during Super Bowl weekend, and I asked him what he wanted his offense to look like in mm -hmm. 2024. And the number one name he brought up was bring Calvin Ridley back because yeah. he was out for so long and how much he changed, you know, the offense. And, you know, they were three inches away from another three touchdowns or anything. <laughs> it is true. I also do think at a certain point, just the price tag matters. And I'm personally a little bit, I, I think Calvin Ridley was a fine player last year. 25 million a year for the next two years, I would be a little bit nervous. And but I, like I do, year three and year four, like I think, I think is a little bit problematic. I think Gabe Davis is half the price of Calvin Ridley. I, and them prioritizing like getting Mitch Morris, for example, like would you rather have Mitch Morris and Gabe Davis? I, I'd rather just have Calvin Ridley than Calvin Gabe Ridley? Davis. Yeah, but it's, it's also $13 million, which they got a center and could do some other moves. Yeah, so but, it's not if, one for if, one if, replacement. but if they didn't sign Gabe Davis, they could have matched this contract. You know, I just felt like they had to do it because they couldn't sign Calvin Ridley on Monday because right. then the third round pick turns into the second round pick. So, like, yeah. again, all these things were aligned. They almost read the needle. They just couldn't do it. I I do think from a fantasy football perspective, though, that and maybe I'm going to be totally off on this. But as I sit here instantly reacting, Calvin Ridley is in a worse spot here with the Titans than he would have yes. been with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Definitely so. DeAndre Hopkins or Calvin really straight up in fantasy circles. That's going to be kind of the Calvin seventh, eighth round debate. So, yeah, I can see it going either way. I don't think that either of them are going to be overly sexy. Like you said, we still think there's a chance the Titans can go with one of the stud wide receivers to fill that slot spot because they don't, they might not trust uh, Traylon Burks. But yeah, I think for fantasy, I think the biggest winner here, it's Christian Kirk, number one. And then I would say Evan Ingram again. Like I thought they were going to take away those hundred receptions because that's not the most efficient use of targets. But I mean, at a certain point, Evan, Evan Ingram might be their second best pass game option right now. Yeah. The, the quietest 100 yard tight end reception season that we have ever seen. Okay. Maybe Traylon Burks does hit. And I think there is a possibility for him to be like a role player plus in the slot yes, at the big Visca. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> He's very different player than Tyler Boyd. Let's put it that way though. Sure. But, and they take like a left tackle at number seven. Okay. This is a really good situation to evaluate Will Levison. A really good situation to evaluate Will Levison, if that's the case. And I don't think the Titans are done. Like, on the defense side of the ball, we've seen them linked to LeJarius Sneed. We've seen them linked to Justin Simmons. Like, these are all... Eric Armstead's another player that Brand Carthon uh, knows quite well. So, like, they still have money to spend. They're being very smart about it early on. Uh, I'm excited to see how it plays out because, you know, Brian Callahan was the first hire in this coaching cycle He's somewhat of a total unknown because Zach Taylor was the head coach. Zach Taylor was also the play caller. Mm -hmm. But anything you read and just, you know, watching from the outside, how they translated and transferred the offense from when Joe Burrow went down to what Jake Browning stepped into. Not saying they made Jake Browning look like a superstar, but they were winning games with the dude mm -hmm. and putting points out there. Mm -hmm. And that is difficult to do with mm -hmm. that level of a talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All eyes on the offensive line. Even if they draft that first round left tackle, I would still be nervous about Tennessee and their offensive line last year was like a complete disaster. So um, yeah, should be exciting for Will Levis. I think just two downfield guys in theory match up DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley with Will Levis's strengths. And it's got to feel a little bit nice for Tennessee to ruin their rivals plans inside the division. And the other team that was linked with Calvin Ridley and offered him a boatload of money was the New England Patriots. They are picking at number three. Certainly indications point to a quarterback. The Marvin Harrison Jr. stuff will always linger there, but maybe the 34th overall selection would make more sense for a wide receiver than mm -hmm. the number three overall selection. Um, this almost feels like giving out you know, your favorite band to the public before they hit it big. And hey, maybe you hate that I'm going to do this. I'm going to point to Pretty Ricky 213, who has, you know, 
People out there on Twitter claim they have sources. This guy, despite only having 6,400 Twitter followers, I'll reveal him to you guys, has been all over some deals a day or hours in front of national insiders, or at least them releasing their information publicly. The Darnell Mooney signing, the Brian Burns trade specifically to the New York Giants, and then the hours as soon as 3 o'clock hit, uh, mentioning that, a division rival was coming in for Calvin Ridley and offered him 20 plus million per year. Again, pretty Ricky with an E 213 on Twitter has been the source so far. Yeah, he's uh, our generation's crack rock. <laughs> we, I love these these Twitter accounts. I don't know. Except seemingly totally accurate every single time at this point. Hey, maybe they're the same guy. person. Maybe they're the Come same on. person. Who knows? Come on. Who knows? They're both great. DMs. All right. I mean, incredible stuff so far hopefully you checked out our videos from the first two days of free agency that means you need to hit the subscribe button hit the thumbs up on top of that be part of the i don't know 19 percent that have been watching our videos yikes and hitting that subscribe button look how close we are to a hundred thousand subscribers you you can be here when we hit that moment so do it all right we'll talk to you next time